Hello, um, I'm going to try to quickly explain um, how to format your sequence properly if you shot in 4x3 and transferred in HD. Um, so we have kind of an odd paradox in that there is no such thing as 4x3 HD. Um, there's only widescreen HD. So when you telecine your footage, um, here's my, my worst Pat Jackson impression, when you telecine your footage you're going to get it um, back pillar boxed with black bars on the left and the right side. Um, so that it fits into the, the 16 by 9 frame. Um, and that's fine, and as you're editing, uh, you should just keep working in that format, which is uh, 1920 by 1080, square pixels, 23.98, and uh, ProRes 422 HQ, or 444 if that's what you got back from, from your telecine, uh, and 24-bit audio. So uh, you're going to edit with these settings, so you're going to keep editing with it pillar box, uh, and then as you get ready to output, uh, when you view this on a 16x9 device, uh, this will look fine because uh, it would be pillar boxing it anyway when it outputs back to the device. The problem comes uh, when you go to DVD and specifically when you look at a DVD on a 4x3 device. A lot of projectors are still 4x3 and a lot of film festivals uh, still want DVD submissions. Uh, and so what happens if you, if you continue with your pillar box material and it plays back on a 4x3 device is that the DVD player will both letterbox and pillar box it, <laughs> um, so that your image is this uh, is floating in the sea of black, which is which is no good because it makes your, your overall image smaller. Um, so what we need to do is to actually change the size of the frame that you're editing with, so it's actually four by three but still HD. Um, and the way that we do this is we're going to crop off the black bars on the left and right um, and lower the horizontal resolution. Um, so when you do this, um, let's see, let's look over here. <clears throat> uh, when you go into your sequence settings and change them, um, you don't want to go to load sequence preset and, and pick one of these because there is no preset for 4 by 3 HD. Uh, it doesn't exist. We're going to have to make our own. So uh, we're going to go in and change the frame size to 1440 by 1080. Uh, and then we want, so this is really important, the pixel aspect ratio has to stay square. Um, there is another format which uses these same dimensions, 1440 by 1080. Um, what it is, is for HDV, uh, and HDV is an anamorphic format, meaning that it records the image horizontally compressed, uh, and then it's supposed to be able to, when you, the Final Cut plays it back, it stretches it back out to fill the screen. Uh, this is a space-saving technique, um, but we're not using it for those purposes. Our image is, is not anamorphic. We want to keep the square pixels, so we want, it's important that this stay square. Um, of course, 24-bit audio, and then keep the same codec. Um, you don't want to change this codec to something else. Whenever you start editing in a codec which is different from what your source media is in, that means that Final Cut has to render every single thing you put in the timeline, uh, which is going to lower the quality because it's going to compress it into a lower quality format as you edit, and it's going to eat up a lot of time waiting for uh, for Final Cut to render. So that we don't want to change that. Okay, so once we do this. Um, in some instances, what Final Cut will do is it will compress the image because it's still trying to fit the entire um, the entire 16 by 9 image into the 4 by 3 frame, including the black bars. Um, and so we need to tell Final Cut, no, I don't want to compress the image horizontally. I want to want to crop the left and right out instead of compressing it. So um, what we need to do here is on the clips in your timeline, select them double click, go into the motion tab, and under distort, we're going to click the red X. Uh, so it will remove the black bars from the left and right. So when you're done, you should see this. You should see uh, your image filling the entire frame with no black. Um, if you want to do this on more than one clip at once, you can, so you don't have to double click on each clip individually. What you do is in the timeline, you select all the clips that you want to resize and then you go to edit and then remove attributes or uh, command option V and what you're going to tell it to do is remove distort so any clip that has um, the, the uh, horizontal resizing to make it fit in the frame we're going to remove that resizing so that it fills the whole frame hit OK and there you go so it's probably a good idea after you do that to play through your timeline just to make sure you didn't uh, remove um, any adjustments you made uh, on, that were intentional uh, for resizing. And then once you've done that, 
you can export out. Now, a couple of people seem to be confused between the difference between uh, QuickTime Movie and QuickTime Conversion. Um, QuickTime Movie is to make your QuickTime master. Your master is the file that is the same format that you edited in. It's the highest quality that your movie can possibly be. Um, and then from your master, you can make different formats, like you can send it to DVD, you can make web formats, etc., etc. This is your archive copy. It's the full quality version. And this is the version that we want to screen, because we want to screen with the highest amount of information possible. Uh, what QuickTime conversion is for is for compressing your film to say, um, for example, for film previews, uh, we had to have people compress their movies into H.264 to shrink the file size because there's no way that, uh, that you can fit the, the full version onto uh, a DVD. The file is too big. Um, but for us, we're, you know, we're, that's the reason why we're having you copy to hard drive. And so uh, what we want to do is, is QuickTime Movie, not QuickTime Conversion. So we pick that. Uh, your settings here should be current settings, audio and video, all markers. Uh, what markers is asking you for is um, it can include information about where the cuts are, which it passes along to compressors. So when you make a DVD or when you make a web version, uh, it can do a better job with the compression because it knows where to where to place um, place the most uh, compression information. Um, <clears throat> You can also include, if you have markers in your timeline and you open it up in QuickTime Player, your markers will, sh markers will show up as a menu and you can jump to those markers on the timeline. Uh, you don't have to have Final Cut to do this. On any Mac, you can open your, your movie with markers in QuickTime Player and, and jump to chapters. So it's really convenient if you're presenting your movie. Um, and then uh, you want Make Movie Self-Contained to be on and you want Recompress All Frames to be off. Uh, and then once you've done that, you can save it out. Uh, and then open in QuickTime Player, and what you should get, um, we can go ahead and I'll, I'll do a small segment of this. Ah, nope, don't want to save this. And we just don't want to do a small portion of the timeline. Uh, I, I would like your files without the countdown and the tail pop, because um, that's just more work for me to remove it. So if you could put in and out points just around the part of the movie that you actually want to export, you know, excluding those things, that'd be great. Uh, and then export. Current settings, all markers, self-contained, audio and video, put it on the desktop, that's fine. And here's what it should look like uh, in QuickTime Player. So if you go up into um, Window and then Show Movie Inspector, you'll get this uh, convenient little panel, which should tell you uh, the frame size, 1440 by 1080, so we're still in HD, 23.98 um, FPS, 24-bit uh, integer audio, so there's no compression, ProRes 422 HQ, and we can play it back and check, and everything looks good.